what happens after static friction breaks. When an object starts to slide, slip, or skid along a surface, there's still friction, but we call it kinetic friction, and it behaves a little differently. Let's look at three similarities and three differences between kinetic friction and static friction. The similarities start with the two principles of Coulomb's model for dry friction. The strength or magnitude of kinetic friction does depend on the combination of the two surfaces, and it depends on how hard those surfaces are pressed together, such that the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction is directly proportional to the magnitude of the normal force between the surfaces. Third similarity is that the force of kinetic friction always points in a direction to oppose sliding, slipping, or skidding. Kinetic friction, like static friction, does not oppose motion, it opposes slippage. Let's look at a couple of examples. If you were to kick a piece of luggage across the floor, you know that friction would gradually bring it to rest as it slid to the right. That would be kinetic friction between the luggage and the floor because the surfaces are rubbing together. And that's going to generate heat, leaving a little trail of heat behind the luggage as it slides to the right. Um, but that brings me back to the most common misconception about friction that it always slows things down. Not the case. Kinetic friction does not oppose motion, it opposes slippage. So here let's look at an example of how kinetic friction can actually speed something up. Take that same piece of luggage and imagine dropping it onto a conveyor belt at the um, baggage claim at an airport. Suppose that the uh, surface of the belt here, the top surface, is moving to the left at one meter per second, and you drop the bag straight down onto the belt. So it hits there, and at the moment it hits the belt, the bag speed is zero, but the belt is moving at the speed of one meter per second. So the belt will be outrunning the bag here, sliding, rubbing against the underside of your luggage. As it does so, it's going to generate a force of kinetic friction on the bag, trying to get the bag to catch up with the belt. Uh, it's also going to be generating heat here as the belt rubs against the underside of the bag. And that force of kinetic friction on the bag, well, forces cause acceleration. The bag is going to ex begin accelerating to the left as it tries to catch up with the belt moving underneath it. So a short time later, the piece of luggage will have sped up a little bit. Let's say now its speed is about 0.5 meters per second to the left. Um, but that's not quite as much as the belt here. So it hasn't caught up to the belt yet. So the belt is still outrunning the bag. So there's still a force of kinetic friction between the belt and the bag, still generating heat between them, the belt kind of carrying that trail of heat forward as it outruns the bag. Note that the force of kinetic friction has the same magnitude at this moment and that moment. Even though the relative speeds have changed, the force of kinetic friction has not. We'll come back to that point in a moment. But this force of kinetic friction is going to continue to cause the luggage to accelerate to the right, speeding it up more and more, so that at some future time, the luggage speed will have matched the speed of the belt. And at that time, once their velocities match, once the two surfaces are moving together and not slipping against each other anymore, then friction disappears, and there's no more heat generation between them either. They'll just continue to move together at the same speed. So there you have kinetic friction actually speeding something up doesn't always slow things down. Uh, that's kind of like a, a traction sort of effect that the uh, belt has on the luggage right here. That brings us to the differences between kinetic and static friction. Three differences. Uh, first being what we've already pointed out, heat generation. When surfaces rub against each other, they convert some of the energy that's present into heat. Um, second, Static friction is only ever as big as it needs to be to prevent slipping up to some maximum value, up to some fraction, which we call the coefficient of static friction, of the magnitude of the normal force. Uh, on the other hand, if slipping, sliding, or skidding is already occurring, the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction is always the same fraction of the magnitude of the normal force. We call this the coefficient of kinetic friction, the ratio of the magnitude of kinetic friction to the magnitude of the normal force. And kinetic friction is always this value. Um, so the force of kinetic friction does not depend on how fast the surfaces are moving relative to each other. 
as we saw with that piece of luggage. When it wasn't moving or when it was moving at 0.5 meters per second, the relative speed didn't matter. The magnitude of force of kinetic friction was the same in both cases. Um, so a fast-moving hockey puck uh, rocketing across the ice feels exactly the same force of kinetic friction as a slow-moving hockey puck gliding to a rest. Uh, note, this is very different from air drag, which usually gets stronger for faster moving objects. Uh, so whenever slipping is occurring, we can always use this equation to calculate the magnitude of kinetic friction. And if you look carefully, you'll see the hidden message in this equation, which is, of course, once again, that friction is fun. The third difference, kinetic friction is weaker than maximum static friction. Uh, friction in general is more effective at preventing slipping than stopping slipping. For some given combination of surfaces, it is almost always true that mu k is smaller than mu s. By comparison, here are the coefficients of static friction between these combinations of surfaces. Note that the coefficient of kinetic friction is in every case less than the coefficient of static friction, or at best it's equal to it. Um, what's the hardest part about pushing a big piece of furniture, like a refrigerator, across the floor? Getting it going when you have to overcome or break static friction, or keeping it going when you're just fighting against kinetic friction. You know, of course, it's harder to start it than to keep it going. That's an indication of how static friction, its maximum value, is greater than the value of kinetic friction always. Has.